Hi, I'm Jen Neiman, co-founder of Property Elite, Chartered Surveyor and APC Assessor. At Property Elite, we provide training and support for the APC, Asset RICS and FRICS qualifications. We cover all routes, pathways and geographic regions via our team of specialist consultants and trained assessors. This also includes the senior professional, specialist, academic and direct entry routes. In this week's podcast, we take a look at the new RICS guidance note, Assessing Viability and Planning, under the NPPF 2019 for England. It's essential listening for APC planning and development candidates, as well as any candidates pursuing planning as a technical competency. Head to our website blog and you can download the full guidance notes from the RICS website. The new guidance note will take effect from the 1st of July 2021. The first question really is, why was it published? In 2019, RICS published the Professional Statement, Financial Viability and Planning, Conduct and Reporting. The new guidance note builds upon this professional statement and provides guidance on financial viability assessments, FVAs, in plan making and decision taking contexts. It's based upon the amended National Planning Policy Framework, NPPF 2019, updated National Planning Practice Guidance, PPG, and the decision in Parkhurst Road Limited versus Secretary of State for Communities and Government, Anna 2018. It replaces the former 2012 RICS guidance note, Financial Viability in Planning. An FVA is defined by RICS as a report assessing the financial viability of a development or development typology. Any viability assessment should follow the government's recommended approach to assessing viability as set out in PPG paragraph 010. This and other useful definitions are found in the glossary on page 5 of the guidance note. So how does the new guidance note relate to the Red Book? RICS confirmed that any valuation-based requirements in the PPG override the requirements of the RICS Valuation Global Standards, otherwise known as the Red Book, as an authoritative requirement. However, where these are not apparent, surveyors need to ensure that any valuation elements of FEAs adhere to the provisions of the Red Book. FEAs have a variety of uses, including, but not limited to, formulating planning policy, assessing planning obligations, including affordable housing, estimating affordable housing tenure viability and composition, reviewing land use, and dealing with heritage assets and conservation issues. They may be used at the plan-making stage by local planning authorities to inform policy-making and at the development management stage to inform decision-taking by LPAs. So what weight is allocated to FVAs by plan-makers? So the weight to be given to a viability assessment is a matter for the decision maker, having regard to all the circumstances in the case, including whether the plan and the viability evidence underpinning it are up to date and any change in site circumstances since the plan was brought into force. All viability assessments, including any undertaken at the plan making stage, should reflect the recommended approach in national planning guidance, including standardized inputs, and should be made publicly available. So how is an FVA structured? An FVA assesses whether a site is financially viable, considering the value generated by the development against the cost of development. This includes consideration of gross development value, input costs, land value, landowner premium, and developer's return. Surveyors should refer to the RICS guidance note, valuation of development property for the residual valuation framework to be used in FVAs. The FVA should demonstrate whether a development is capable of providing levels of developer contributions compliant with emerging and up-to-date plan policy. This will include a minimal reasonable landowner's return, known as EUV plus a premium, and a suitable developer's return, see PPG paragraph 018. FEAs must include sensitivity analysis to demonstrate the impact of changes in inputs on the output. So what is the output of an FEA? FVAs typically have an output of benchmark land value, BLV. This is defined as existing use value, EUV, plus a landowner's premium. So in total known as EUV plus. Existing use value, EUV, is defined by PPG Paragraph 015 as the value of the land in its existing use. 
The landowner's premium should provide a reasonable incentive to bring the land forward for development, together with a policy-compliant contribution. It should be noted that BLV is not necessarily the same as market value, as per VPS4 of the Red Book. This is because of differences in the assumptions and methods employed in the FEA, i.e. BLV is not the price paid in the marketplace. Instead, it relates to the minimum level of return at which a reasonable landowner will be willing to sell. Alternatively, it may be based on the alternative use value, AUV, excluding the landowner's premium where appropriate. This relates to the value of the land for uses other than its existing use. The plan will set out the circumstances under which AUV should be adopted. Surveyors should cross-check their assessment of BLV using a policy-compliant residual land value, as per the RICS guidance note valuation of development property, and by using the comparable method based on similar land transactions. Both of these cross-checks should assume policy compliance. An FVA should report on the EUV premium, total BLV, AUV if appropriate, and supporting evidence and considerations. So finally... Here are the steps involved in determining BLV for planning purposes. One, establish EUV. Two, if appropriate, establish AUV. Three, establish the landowner's premium above EUV based on the evidence in PPG paragraph 016. Four, cross-check the EUV plus calculated above by establishing the residual value of the site and fifth, and finally, cross-check the EUV calculated above, again, using comparable land transactions. That's it for today's podcast. Remember, you can book in your free 15-minute consultation via our website. We can also provide feedback on your referral or prelim review report. If you head to our website, you can also access our other free support resources, including our ebook guides, podcasts, videos, quizzes, blog and CPD newsletter. We can't wait to work with you so thank you for listening and I'll see you next week.